Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to DIY easy fabric covered lampshade. We're going to make this so easy. You're going to need a lampshade, of course. We're going to start with a brown one. We're going to need some sort of trim if you want, that's optional. A hot glue device and some fabric of your choice. And you'll need some spray glue. This is Aline's Tacky. I got it at Walmart. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you is just different types of lampshades, okay? Because this is what I want to show you. What we're going to do tonight is just a standard lampshade. Now, standard lampshade is... Basically, it's wider on the bottom, narrower on the top, but this one holds, goes over like a um, night light bulb or a candlestick bulb. Um, this one is round, however, it's with panels. So I wanted to show you that. You could cover it like a round lampshade, but you see how it dips in this way? That's just going to be a little bit more maneuvering when it comes to lampshade, and I'll kind of show you that as well. Um, and the last kind is like this kind, which is not actually round. It is, um, with panels. This one happens to be octagonal. I have one outside that is square. And the way you cover this lampshade is different than the way you cover the other two. But what I'm going to show you tonight is just how to cover this standard lampshade, which is completely smooth from the top to the bottom. I mean, it can have like fabric over it, but you want it to be completely smooth from the top to the bottom, no ridges and no panels. So the first thing you want to decide is when you're choosing your fabric, is it going to be a solid or a print? Well, if it's going to be a print, you have to make sure that on the back side of the seam, the opposite side is going to be the front of your lampshade. So if you're going to use a fabric with a picture on it or a pattern, you want the pattern to be straight and centered in that center of piece of fabric. So what I do is I lay that piece on the area of the lampshade, I mean of the fabric that I want to land in the center of the lampshade. And then I roll just to make sure I have enough space and you're going to roll and you're going to cut from the seam to the seam with a little extra. So you see as I'm rolling, I'm taking a sharpie for camera purposes. Um, you just can't see the pencil on the camera so I'm using a sharpie. But what I'm doing is I'm leaving about an inch to an inch and a half. Um, I'm making a dash line at the bottom and I'm going a little, about an inch and an inch and a half longer than the lampshade. And I'm gonna do the same thing at the top. I'm gonna leave the inch to the inch and a half and it depends on the lampshade. Um, if you have a lot of trim at the top already, like a big piece that you need to go over, you might wanna leave extra. If you're going to use the trim method, which I'm going to show you both finishing methods, if you're going to use the trim method, then you don't need very much extra. You just need enough so that you don't have to worry about placing it absolutely perfect. Okay, so now I'm just using the Sharpie and I'm going back and forth and I'm going to cut a little extra on both ends. So I'm going to cut a little extra at the top, a little extra at the bottom, and a little extra past the seam. Um, but you definitely want to make sure you roll it. You don't never want to cut just a straight piece of fabric across because it will not lay perfectly flat on your lampshade. As you can see, we end up with almost like a big giant smiley face. So as I'm cutting it out, I'm actually cutting it out even further from my line. I want to give myself a little bit extra, especially if I have the fabric. If you are working with like a very expensive fabric and you're trying to use every last piece of it, um, you want to be more careful with your cutting. But since I have extra of this, um, I'm just going to cut over my line which is already over the lampshade because i want to make sure i don't cut myself short um all right and i'm just using my fabric scissor scissor and i'm cutting around loosely and then i will go back after i dry fit it and i will cut perfectly on the line all right and definitely if um you ever need to draw on the back just be careful with the pattern now i wanted to say that if you do end up using a striped fabric you will have to know that the stripe will only be up and down or left and right perfectly parallel for one small section of the lampshade otherwise as you can imagine when you roll the lampshade then the stripe will be going in all different directions okay <laughs> solid fabrics work the best um but, you know, the prints also work really nicely, especially a print like this. And if you have a print with an all-over pattern like a floral or something like that, then that would also work really well. Okay? And now, after I've dry fit it, I went ahead and I'm going to cut right on the lines. So I make sure that I didn't cut it too small. And I overlap the back. I checked the back to see that it was overlapped and it will overlap very nicely. Um, 
The thing you want to be careful of with the overlap is that with a fabric, like a light fabric like this, you'll actually see the seams where you doubled up your fabric in the back coming through when you turn the lamp on. Um, so you don't want, you want to make it look as neat as possible and we'll get to that in a second. But I also wanted to say that if you end up using a dark fabric, um, what did decorating industry tends to do or the lampshade industry is if you have a dark lampshade it is usually sprayed inside with a metallic gold or a metallic silver so that would help bounce the light back off and focus it down towards whatever you're lighting um, as opposed to coming through the lampshade and we've had paper lampshades that were blue in the past and gold and then they were like white or silver or gold spray painted on the inside so it can create that reflection so we can add that light to the workspace okay so now I've turned it over and I've laid a fat flat if you feel like you need to press your fabric you go right ahead get your iron out I did not feel like I needed to do that because I knew that I was going to be able to lay it flat once I have it glued um, the instructions for the tacky glue says um, only just to cover your work area for overspray so I'm putting it on my board and I'm adding a little extra um, but I would have probably put down some newspaper if I read the newspaper, <laughs> if I read the newspaper. I actually have four pieces of newspaper that I got from the Dollar Tree that I'm saving for a craft project. <laughs> so I just put down my cutting mats and my glue boards. I'm sorry about the mess, but so this particular glue, when it was brand new, you have to shake it like spray paint. Um, this was the first time I was using it and I really did like the way it worked. Um, but if I've used 3M spray glue many, many times in the past. Um, so what you want to do is you want to put a thin coat all over your fabric. As you can see, it kind of makes it look wet as you spray it. Um, and then I've let it sit for less than two minutes. You just want it to be a tiny bit more dry and a tiny bit more tacky. I let it dry for two minutes, but you let it dry depending on how much glue you put on there. So, you know, if you end up getting a really wet spot or something, you just want to let it cure up a little bit so it's just a tiny bit tacky. So you could see here, this is just a minute, and I timed it. It was like a minute and 54 seconds. So I say two minutes. All right, and then while I have that done, I've got my glue gun plugged in. Because we're going to, I'm going to show you how to use um, the two finished edges, and both will need the glue gun. Okay. So now that it's all tacky, I've made sure I lined up the same spot that's opposite of the seam down first in the middle where the pattern is, and then I've rolled over one side. So now I want to make sure that from the finished side of the fabric, I've rubbed the lampshade. I've rubbed the fabric on the lampshade and I'm pulling it back where the seam is. The reason I'm doing that is that's where going to help us get our finished edge. All right. The piece that um, I'm going to go the same way as the lampshade. So basically on the lampshade, there's a piece going over another piece. Basically one half of the lampshade goes over the other one. So I want to use that as my edge to go over the other piece. Um, you can do it the opposite. This is just what I'm doing. Okay. And then I've started from the other end, I've turned it over. Um, and right now this glue is repositionable. Um, if I made a mistake, basically I could peel it off and put it back down again. Um, that's why we don't do a dry mount. Okay. So now you see, I have so much extra fabric. So now what I'm going to do is I'm pulling back the one side that's going to be the underneath fabric. And I'm just going to cut a very straight line using the seam of the lampshade. Okay, I'm using the seam as a lampshade as a guide. And then I want to lay that completely flat. And now I'm taking the other edge that is kind of, um, basically I've cut it even into where it needs to be. And I'm folding it over. Right now I'm just folding it over and I'm letting it stick to itself. But I'm going to go back and I'll glue it with the glue gun when we're ready. Okay. So now I'm going to take my mats off because they're all sticky and you don't want to deal with them anymore. <laughs> so for this particular uh, tutorial, I'm going to show you how to fold over the edge on the bottom half of the lampshade. And then we're going to trim out the edge on the top half of the lampshade. If you want to do it like this, you can. If you want to do both trimmed out edges or both fold over edges, that's completely optional. Up to you. You design your own. So now I'm just going back and I'm trimming evenly because like I told you, as we fold this fabric over, it is going to show through a tiny bit 
Um, you'll see like the shadow of it um, on the inside when you turn the light on. So we want to make it as even and neat as possible. So starting where the seam is with the fabric that is closest to the shade, I'm going to put a little hot glue and I'm going to start wrapping the edge over. It is just really that simple. You want to just do a little at a time and you want to work with the fabric um, to have not to, excuse me, <coughs> sorry, to not have a lot of bumps and um, bulky like pieces of fabric. Um, you want to make sure you smooth it out as best as you pos as possibly can. I think I just had one spot where I actually let the glue cool off too much before I rolled the fabric over and had a little issue, but you can't tell when the lampshade's lit as long as that edge is nice and straight. So you can see I'm almost only going over just as much as the factory did. Um, but depending on the thickness of that, about that trim on the bottom is going to be determine how much you want to leave extra fabric. Okay, so if you have a lampshade that's got a really thick trim at the bottom, you want to make sure you leave enough to go over. Um, that's only that's the only requirement. And that's why this doesn't have measurements, because every lampshade's different, every style is different, every technique is different. Okay? So I'm just going to continue along the way, and I'm only picking like one inch at a time. I'm only trying to glue a little bit at a time, because you don't want to really um, have your glue cool, and you'll have too much bulk under there. All right. Now, um, I know I didn't call this a DIY Dollar Tree project because nothing is from the Dollar Tree <laughs> except the glue sticks. Um, but, you know, we've talked about you can get fat quarters at Walmart. You can get uh, fabric at Walmart. You can. That's where I got the spray glue from. That's where this lampshade came from. Actually, this lampshade was from Michael's. I take that back. This lampshade was from Michael's a long time ago. Um, the lampshade that was in the cover was from Walmart um, that I didn't do. I, I, you know, it's funny. I waited to do this tutorial um, to buy a lampshade. And when I bought the lampshade, I realized it was too big for me to actually film on the table. <laughs> so that's why I said, oh, you know what? I have this little lampshade on a little stick lamp in my room. Let me just cover it with some twall fabric that will match my bedroom. Okay. And then when you get back to the other end, I've decided to then go ahead and glue that seam. All right, so I'm just pulling that seam back a little bit and getting the hot glue right under that seam. And just going to glue it down. I realized a little bit got unfolded uh, in the beginning when I was working with it, so I just straightened that out. But you can see, even not perfect, it still looks okay, especially with a pattern fabric. And it'll also look okay with a solid fabric because you can't really tell. Um, all right. And that's the bottom fold over technique. Um, like I said, you can do the fold over technique top and bottom if you want to. Um, but then I'm going to show you on the other end. Oh, just fixing it. On the top, I'm going to show you the um, trim out method. Now, this trim that I'm going to be using is a just a black rope trim that I had gotten from Walmart a million years ago. But they still sell them at the fabric stores. Rope trim is very popular still. Now, if you were going for a nautical theme or more of a, like a rustic farmhouse and you picked sort of like a burlap lampshade or a rusty, um, not rusty, um, like a lace, uh, what's the word I'm thinking, like a crocheted lampshade and you wanted to trim it out with some of that nautical rope or jute rope, you can. It would look really cute. But just keep in mind the scale of the lampshade with the scale of the trim. Um, and I'll show you what I mean at the end. So for the top, what I'm doing is I'm taking the scissor and it's completely flat against the edge of the lampshade. I don't want to cut the existing fabric from the lampshade. I just want to cut what fabric we put on there tonight. And I want it to be as close to the top as possible without going over. Okay? And then we're going to take the rope. Uh, like I said, this is a satin rope trim that I've had since we, Lisa and I did bags together. And, um, or actually, probably since I first got the apartment in 2006. That's probably when it was, because I used a lot of it back then. <laughs> um, so with the um, the rope trim, is usually they get it for you in the store. They have tape on the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a little in from the tape, and I'm going to start at the seam once again, just like we did with the bottom. Okay? And I'm going to glue... Just a small bead of glue. Again, one, like, going to work an inch at a time. 
And then I'm going to glue, not where the tape is, but just past where the tape is. I'm sorry, this trim is having a mind of its own, so forgive me. Um, and I'm just going to glue, and I want to make sure, you want to make sure it's as even as possible. All right? And then when you've glued the very edge down, then you can go ahead and trim it off. And I'm actually just going to leave it a little fuzzy until I, um, until I get the back done. I mean, until I get to the back, you know, back, back around to the front. I'm sorry. So just like when we were folding over, we're just going to do like an inch, two inches at a time. It's a little easier with the trim because you're just really laying the trim there. But you just want to be mindful that it's even with the top of the lampshade. And you don't have it like, you know, doing the wave on you. All right. And be mindful of your fingers and the hot glue. But I'm, you know, this, when you're able to pull the fabric or the trim over the hot glue, it makes it much easier. You don't really have to use your fingers directly. All right. And there was a couple of spots where I had too much glue and it was popping out on the top. So I just waited for it to cool down a little bit before I pulled it off. All right. And just hold it before you turn. Okay. And then just continue around. So there are different kinds of trim besides rope trim. There is gimp trim, or I showed in the beginning, you could use some ribbon from the Dollar Tree or any kind of ribbon that you wanted. Um, just be mindful with the ribbon. It's going to lay like the fabric. So if you have a very harsh angle to your lampshade, then it might bulk and um, and bump up, okay? Just keep that in mind. The rope, uh, the gimp is always, you know, the really nice alternatives um, jute string would be nice as well, like some jute cord um, would be really nice as well, and it would work like this. So what I've done here is I've untwisted the rope open a little bit, and I've put a little glue in the middle of the rope. And then I'm going to twist it back closed. And what that's going to do is that's going to help it from fraying, okay? And then I want to make sure you do that exactly where you're going to cut it, and exactly where the end of it meets the beginning of the other rope. Does that make sense? Do you guys know what I mean? I hope you do. And then once you have that done, you just take a dot of hot glue and you match the end of the trim up. And that, my friends, is what they say is that. Okay, so once this is cooled off, I just want to show you guys another type of trim. Um, the only trim that I have that looks like what I'm talking about has got pom-poms on it. <laughs> so this pom-pom trim has sort of a ribbon sort of and thing. And if you have a trim like this, you want to make sure you glue it on the inside of the lampshade. That's what I wanted to show you. You want to do a rollover method and then you want to glue the trim on the inside of the lampshade. All right. In case you have any of this fringe or anything cute you want to hang from there. Okay. So that's it. I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial as much as I hope uh, I enjoyed sharing it with you. If you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments down below. Any questions at all. Don't also don't forget to let me know if you want me to show you how to do a different type of lampshade. All right, and and don't forget to like it. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you like it. Um, I just wanted to show you what the trim looks like from the inside, real close, um, and then what it looks like all lit up. So if you know anybody who'd be interested, don't forget to share this with friends and family. Um, and thank you, everybody always if you haven't yet click subscribe and when you do a little bell will pop up when you ring that bell youtube will let you know whenever i upload a new video and as always take care god bless see you next time bye